That picture that you just saw on the title page was from a multi-week backcountry trip I did for work about middle of last October. The reason that we're discussing that is I had my Wushan KG816 with me with a AAA cell pack on the back because it's easy to take it in and out of the saddlebag during the day. On that trip, we have to check in once a day through one of the repeaters and the Wushan was unable to hit the repeater. Fortunately, my colleague had his any tone along and we were able to determine that by looking at the settings in the AnyTone that the Wushan had the wrong tone code in it for the turbulent repeater. Fortunately, it wasn't a disaster because we also had a backup sat phone as well as an extra radio and we were able to proceed. But it did teach me that when you are in the backcountry, uh, it's not good to assume that that repeater is going to work for you if you haven't been using it recently. And you need to be prepared to get into your radio and make the appropriate changes to make it work. That'll mean having your frequency list, a printout of it with you, and the ability, either a cheat sheet on how to go through the following procedure or the ability to remember how to do it. Intuitively, doesn't always work as I found out. So we're gonna go into this and we're gonna have a scenario where we need to change what happened to me, and this is going to be dealing with the any tone, not with the Wushan for now. We will change the tone code to the proper tone code. Another thing that happened recently was when I was programming this radio with the software, I did a keying error and I keyed in 885 for the last three digits of the transmit frequency when it was supposed to be 855. and. We weren't able to talk on simplex around the lodge because of that. And the last thing was yet another thing that happened to me a year or two ago when I called dispatch and they said my voice was very overmodulated and garbled. I was able to determine that I had accidentally put wideband in on that channel and it should have been narrow. So those are the three things that we're going to cover in this tutorial and look at so you'll be able to do it in the field. It's not a comprehensive programming tutorial. However, you will take away from this the ability to be able to get into the menu system and make changes to some of those other items that are in there that you might need to personalize for your preferences. It could be anything from an individual squelch setting to uh, your backlight timeout, those sorts of things, they'll all be much easier for you to do. This will facilitate you being able to do that. So we'll get started and see how we go. The first thing that we're going to have to do to correct our bad memory channel is purge it of the bad data that's in there so we can enter good data. And that segues nicely into introducing something that shares a lot in common with me, if not most of the men that are watching this, uh, which is something that's the feeling of being ignored and neglected, which this manual often is. In our case, it's our spouses. In this case, it's a result of, partially the result of a non-native English speaker writing this manual. But it is useful, and it is one of the better Chinglish manuals out of all the ones that are out there. And in order to delete the channel, page 19 on the lower left, it does have some good instructions there that you can follow. So that would be the first set of things to put in your cheat sheet that you're going to carry with you in the top of your pack when you're in the backcountry and you run into this problem of needing to correct the bad data in your radio. And basically what the bottom of page 19 tells us to do is grab our radio and hit the function key. I'm already on the channel I need to get rid of by the way and I've already got that band selected. So I'm on the top band. It's called test. It's on channel 1. I want to get rid of it. I hit the function key so I get the little icon. I hit V until the channel, well I hit it and then the channel number flashes. I hit the A key again 
and now I hold down the B key I get a double beep and um, I've got nothing there now on channel 1 so there we go so now the next thing I'm going to need to do is start putting in good data to replace the bad stuff that was in there so as a result of our last operation I don't know if you can see it in here or not but the channel number is still flashing so what I'm going to want to do is hit the A key again and hold down the D key so that I'm storing that now I want to hit the V key and now I'm going to want to put in my proper VFO frequency of 143.295 43 9.5 now we have that in our VFO and we're going to want to store that into memory channel 1 so we're going to hit the A key we're going to hit the V key and we're going to select the channel that we want which is number 1 we're going to hit the A key again and then we're going to hold down the C key until we got that and then when we hit the M key you can see that that frequency is now stored in channel 1 it's just the numbers it's no name next we're going to have to move on and correct those other settings or at least make sure that they are correct this again is where the manual can come in handy at the back uh, starting on page 30 there's this table that shows the locations of all the functions that are contained in the menu and so it makes it easier for you when you start scrolling through the menu using the B and the C keys the B takes you up through the menu the C takes you back down regressively you can follow through on this and if you're really organized unlike me you might even write down the ones that you're going to be dealing with in this case I believe it's going to be number one and uh, for the tone code it's going to be number 10 for wide or narrow band and it's going to be number 13 for our offset and as well if you want to give it a name again instead of the number you'll also be dealing with number 14 to dial in the name which we covered in the programming tutorial as well so we will get started now and start working through these various settings in the menu Now's a good time to address what can best be called technically as a real gotcha and that is you may not be able to get the right increment to the second and third digits after the decimal place for your transmit frequency because your offset won't go there due to the stepping setting and the stepping which is number nine in the menu dictates how fine you can tune the digits after the decimal place the finest you can get with the, this radio is 2.5 kilohertz and that will be programmed through there before you can achieve your offset frequencies that you need to get and in order to access menu number nine there's another got you you have to access it from the VFO mode not from memory channel mode so if you're in memory channel mode toggle over to VFO with the C key before you go into your menu and then you go into your menu it will allow you to access menu number nine and then you can tune the stepping down to 2.5 when you've got it to 2.5 settle it in there with the D key and now and only now can you achieve the finer tuning on getting those decimal places to the spot where you want them before we move on from that stage now that we've got everything set the way we want it we do have to get that stored into memory channel again to get all that into memory channel we hit A little icon on the upper left we hit C the memory channel we want starts to flash one is flashing we can move it to whichever one we want then we hit when we've got it on what we want we hit A again and hold down the C key 
double beep. Now you go hit VM and the one is solid on the right and it is showing the settings that you had in there. Now here's the tricky part where the manual falls down flat on its face and it took me forever to figure out how to get through this and that is, is when you're trying to designate the CTCSS encode for that channel that you want. In this case we wanted 114.8. So if you hit A set and you, oh well, sorry I've already changed it, but normally you hit A set if you cannot dial the CTCS encode in you want, you've got to hit the one key. Um, that toggles it between off and um, the various settings. So you want to get into where it's showing the HZ by toggling the one key first to get it to one of those three settings and then you can dial in the tone code that you want. In this case we want 114.8 and we set that into memory by hitting the D and again though once you've done that you are going to want to re-establish that permanently in memory by doing that memory save thing all over again. So just as we did last time you will hit the A, you will hit the C, the memory will dial, you'll hit the A and you'll hold down the C again. Now that tone code will be stored in there Well, it was supposed to be stored in there. So now we're going to do it again. And hold down that. Let's see if that's in there now. Okay. That's there. And um, A. Memory channel flashing. A again. Hold down and then go A set. Well, that's the next problem. It doesn't seem to be showing that tone code again, so we'll have to look into that and see why. The problem that we just saw with not being able to store the tone code to the memory channel was not selecting the memory channel before we stored it. So in other words, we were still in VFO mode and um, the proper way then, it's good we encountered that because now you know how to work it out. We are again in VFO mode and we go in to that and we select the tone code we want. We store that and then when we go to save the memory channel before we do that, we pop back over to memory channel mode then we hit A, we hit C, it's flashing, we hit A again, and we hold the C down until we get the double click, go back to confirm, and now we see that in that memory channel we do have that tone code. So when we hit that, now it's all correct except for naming the channel. If you want to name the channel, we've already covered that in the other tutorial, but now it will be a matter of going through there and uh, as you remember you go through until you hit the name part of the menu which is there and then you just start dialing your digits in and storing them in as per the programming so you know if you we had six there and um, you can go on and so forth I'm not going to do the naming there because it'll be covered in the programming but now you've got that channel fixed. Well as it turns out the naming procedure is fairly obfuscated in the manual so I'll quickly run through that. It's probably less frustrating than having to try and find another tutorial in YouTube and getting to the right point in it for that procedure. So naming again back into the manual here it's number 14 is what we're going to want to go to and um, you'll have to bear with me because I might make a few mistakes on this. I normally do it through software but we'll get in here and if I recall correctly as always we get into the menu and we get up to number 14 
which is their name, and you dial in what you want. So after you've finished dialing in the digit or the alphanumeric character that you want, you proceed forward to the right by hitting the 1. You can reverse back again by the 4. Whichever digit is selected is the one that's flashing. You then dial it in till you get to the digit that you want and then proceed onward by hitting the 1 key. When you've dialed in all the digits you want in order to name that channel successfully, move off of your very last digit by hitting the 1 key. And uh, in fact, maybe you don't have to, I don't really know, I just do for practice. And when you're done, store it in by hitting D. And don't forget that any of the changes that you've made is like a scratch pad. If you want to store those permanently, restore everything that you've done again into that memory channel by doing the standard memory channel mode. If you were in VFO, go back to memory channel mode. A, C, A, hold down C, long press, double beep confirming that you're stored there and now you've got that in there permanently. Now you've got your name a couple that's associated of other with all those changes that you've just made. That radio that was in there was a version 2. I believe that there is a later version, a number 3, that's being sold in some demographics that has other features such as being able to maybe remap uh, one of the keys on the side so that you can have a second push to talk. I'm not really knowledgeable about that. Um, on that version 2, it has the memory banks in there which can be remapped and you will be looking at the back of your manual for doing that as well. So I will do some more manual programming and maybe if I get time we can cover the Wushan KG816 which is still a very useful radio for multi-day high altitude trips where you need uh, a double A cell, I think it's a 14.4, no it's not 14.450, but it's the form factor that's the triple A cell in lithium ion that has 4.2 volt output, so you use it with dummy cells. You can use that in your transceiver, your beacon, and swap it into the triple A cell pack of the Wushan if you've got a big emergency and you'll get up to six hours out of that if the battery's fully charged. You would use two of those and three dummy cells. Is it three or four? I think it's five cells in total that that pack takes. Anyway, two of those cells gives you 8.4 and so that Wushan is still something to consider if you only need VHF, if you're up on the WAP to ice field on a multi-day trip it's stored in your pack. You're only going to use it if things go south and you need ultra lightweight because you've already shaved your armpits and the head of your toothbrush to save on that weight. The next best thing you can do is start looking at the battery pack that's on your radio for weight savings. So we will go into that. I outlined earlier how I had problems with the 816 in the back country. So I guess it's a good idea to make sure you can deal with that as well. Mr. Deslini, would you like to explain what you're doing right now? God only knows. <laughs>